courageous and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Since Marshal Wyatt Earp was heading to Tucson to see the governor on business, there was nothing for him to do but to take the infant he had found along with him. Well, Wyatt Earp, I sure am glad to see you. Hi, Slim. Well, what you got there? A baby. Baby. A oh, baby. I, I uh, found it by a, a burning wagon about 20 miles down the road. Oh, Indians? Yeah, Apaches. Poor little thing. Burned the wagon, killed its mother and father. Oh, that's too bad. Who were they? Nothing left to identify. <laughs> Cute little fella, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with the baby? Oh, leave it here with you. You can see that it gets taken care of. I gotta go see the governor. Oh, no, wait a minute, Wyatt, wait. This is a sheriff's office, not an orphanage. Yeah, but the, the killing happened in Pima County, and that's your jurisdiction. That's right, it is. But how can I make sure that this baby belonged to that couple? Well, because I found him near the burning wagon. He just didn't walk there. Oh, yeah? Seems to me, Wyatt, this baby's got the same colored eyes that you've got. So? So, do you think it's kindly to pawn off a personal responsibility on a brother officer? This is not a personal responsibility. Now, well, wait a minute. Even if I was sure of that, I couldn't help you. I'm a single man. Oh, well, so am I, but you're the sheriff. That's right. And by the power vested in me, I'm ordering you to take this baby out of here right now. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. It stays here. Wyatt! You step through that door and I'm charging you with desertion. What? Desertion. Oh, now, come on, Slim. I... Slim, I never would have thought it, but I think you're a coward. That's right. I am. That's why I came to you, Lily. I got to see the governor and get back to Tombstone. And I, well, I thought that you might, well, know some people that might want to adopt it. And good family, of course. How would I know a good family? Yeah, well, guess I'll have to scout around myself. Can you put me up for the night? Not a room left. Muley took the last one yesterday. But there are a lot of rooms at the new hotel. All right. But do me one favor, will you, Lily? What favor? Uh, take care of the baby tonight. Me? Sure, you. In a saloon? Oh, now, Wyatt, this ain't no place for an innocent baby. That's right, Wyatt, you know. Uh, and besides, Lily ain't nobody to take care of a baby. What do you mean, I ain't nobody to be taking care of a baby? Oh, she knows plenty about men and whiskey, but taking care of an innocent infant like that, that's something else. It, it needs tender care. What's so hard about taking care of a baby? Now, never mind now, just forget it. Are you trying to insult me or something? What's got into you anyway, Lily? I'm as tender as you are, you big ape, and if I had a nickname like Mulehead, I'd keep my big mouth shut. And stop sloshing down that whiskey like it was spring water. I'm paying for it, ain't I? No, and I'm sick of having you hang around here. Go someplace. Fix your wagon or something. Good day, Miss Lily. Old mule skinner. Simmer down, Lily. He didn't mean anything by it. Look, will you help me? I don't know. It's asking an awful lot. Oh, just one night, please. Well, I guess I do owe you a favor to at that. But don't make a habit of it. Thanks, Lily. You won't cause you any trouble.
Maybe you're hungry. Is that what's eating you? I'll get you a midnight lunch. Yeah, you want to be picked up, I suppose. Well, all right, but just for a minute now, mind you, no more. Here we go. like that now, huh? One little swing around the mountain now, huh? Oh, say, you need a new wagon sheet here. I'll put you right over here and see what I can do for you. There you go, Don. whiskey bottle? I boiled it in hot water first. Well, I should hope so. Here, hand me that. That was a $25 petticoat all the way from Kansas City. Don't you worry. Now I'll get you another one. <laughs> Isn't he cute, Muley? He's kind of cute at that, huh? I wonder what his name is. Now, how do I know what his name is? It isn't branded on him, is it? Maybe it's the same as yours. Edgar? It could be Edgar. Yeah, it could be at that, couldn't it? Yeah. Edgar, huh? No, he, he couldn't be named Edgar Lily. What's eating you anyway? Nothing, you big moose. What's eating you? Well, nothing, but I I need some sleep, I tell you that. Here now. There we go. Up, Sir Daisy. There you are. Oh no, what's the matter with them, huh? Here, he likes you so much. Walk him up and down till he's asleep. Oh, Lily, walk him. Here. There, you see? I think he does like me at that. Good morning, Mule. What's good about it? Now, here, you take this baby and get going. I haven't been to bed yet. That fella kept me up all night. Well, where's Lily? She's all took it out, too. Now, look here, Wyatt. You shouldn't have left this baby with her. It's bringing back hurtful memories. What memories? Of her own baby. Lily had a child? Yes, she did. She and her husband and little baby came west. They got the fever in Dodge City, and the husband and baby died there. I didn't know that. Hmm. Nobody knows about it except myself. And I wouldn't have found out about it except that she let it slip one New Year's Eve in the Lucky Ten. Lucky Ten? Did she own that too? No, no, no. She was just working there at the time. That was before she got back in for the mansion house in Tucson here. I see. And don't you go telling her that I told you any of this either. Do you understand? We've got things in a business basis, and that's the way I want to keep them. 
Now you go out and find a nice home for that baby and no saloon like Lily's. Well, how can I find any kind of a home for it if I have to take care of it? Muley, why don't you watch it today? Oh, no. Just until sundown. Well, I... Well, I suppose I could bed it down in a wagon in my blacksmith shop. Uh. That's the perfect place for him. But only till sundown, mind you. Understand? Muley. What? How did, uh... Lily get the mansion house. Who backed it? I did. New Year's morning, ten years ago. And you found a home for the baby, huh? Well, I found one family, the Fergusons. They have 12 children already. One more would make it 13, and the Fergusons happen to be very superstitious. Then there were the Browns on the south side of town. And Mr. Brown has a stone house and a stone heart. He only charged me 50 cents to water my horse. That left uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sanchez, a very lovely couple in their late 60s. You mean you dragged that poor, helpless little thing to all them places? Where is he? Oh, he's all right. Muley's got him better down in his wagon. That poor, helpless little lamb down in that blacksmith shop? It was only for one day. It won't hurt him. Not the baby, Edgar. Edgar? Muley, haven't you got any finer feelings at all? Now, what did I do? Didn't you know his own son drowned back in Missouri? No. I didn't even know he was married. Sure. His wife died having the baby. Edgar raised him himself till the accident. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Neither did I, till he let it slip one New Year's Eve. I'll tell you something else you don't know. Right now, he's putting three orphans through school back east. One of them's a Comanche. And why he sticks to the freighting business, I can't figure out. He's really a rancher at heart. Lily! Lily, oh, Lily, am I glad you're here. What's the matter? Oh, wait. I, I think he swallowed a piece of hardtack. He's been hollering for over an hour now. Hardtack? Now, how did he get hardtack? Well, he, he had to chew on something, didn't he? Chew? With what? With what? With teeth. Here, look, I'll show you. Look. Keep your dirty paws away from that baby's mouth. What's the matter with you anyway? <laughs> Mike, fix up another bottle. I'm probably stuck with him another night. That's nice of you, Lily. But just once more, understand? That's the limit. Just to get him back on his feed. Oh, hard tack. Well, I, I did me best, Lily, didn't I? A freight wagon in a dirty blacksmith shop ain't no proper place for a baby. My blacksmith shop ain't dirty. Well, it ain't no Duke's palace. Well, it's better than this dead fall of yours, honey, and with a better set of people. Oh, keep quiet. You're disturbing the baby. You postponing the evil day, Wyatt? What evil day? The day you'll have to take that baby back to Tombstone. Not me, Slim. No, I know the ideal parents. Except for one little detail. How to make them know it. I, sir, am Arnold Trask, actor manager to the Philadelphia Players. I should like accommodations for my wife and myself at the professional rates, of course. Mr. and Mrs. Trask? Oh, Michael Earp. Oh, mighty happy to see you here. I, I assure you, Marshal, my wife and I left no unpaid bills at Tombstone. Oh, well, that's not what I had on my mind. Uh, would you be interested in doing a private performance? Possibly. Uh, have you ever been in a circus? Certainly not. Oh, but you could pretend to be in one now. Uh, for a fee, of course, couldn't you? Well, I uh, could impersonate a circus performer, I suppose, uh, if the fee were adequate. Fine. Uh, would you care to have some breakfast with me? Oh, by all means. You don't have to be jumping up and down every few minutes. He's all right. Sit down, sit down. Make me nervous. 
Why don't you go down to that blacksmith shop and fix your wheel? You make me nervous. I don't want to fix my wheel, thank you. Well, you'll both be happy to know we got a prospect. Yes, sir, a real fine couple. They're coming over here any minute now and have a look at our little friend here. And if they like him, they're going to adopt him. How about that? Oh, that's, that's fine. That's just fine. That's what we wanted to hear, huh, Lily? You bet. Maybe the both of us will be getting some sleep nights again. You know, it's funny how it happened. I was just sitting there at the hotel uh, having breakfast, and then they walked. Yeah, they just walked right in. And I was getting desperate, just about to give up. Well, I even had the wild idea that you might adopt it, Lily. Me? <laughs> That's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Oh, I know. I threw it out right away. Well, how could I adopt it? I couldn't keep it in place like this, could I? Oh, no. No, of course not. You don't think I'm going to sell this place, do you? Oh, certainly not. This place is a gold mine. I, I'm independent. Oh, I realize that. You uh, are independent. You bet. I don't take nothing from nobody, man, woman, or child. What's more, it's the kind of life I like. Oh, I understand, Lily. It's exciting, new people all the time. <laughs> sure, lots of jokes. Freighters and cowboys. I like them kind of roughnecks. <laughs> Who wants to live on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere? Well, nobody's asking you to, Lily. <laughs> well, then don't be getting any of those wild ideas. Well, I even had a wilder idea. Well, Muley here, I, I, I thought he might, uh, might take it. Who? Me? Oh, not in your life. I'd have to give up freighting. Say, I used to be a freighter myself. <laughs> uh, nothing I like better than a good wagon ride. Sure, everybody likes it. Always something new, always something different around the bend. Hmm? A girl at every stop. You bet, ma'am, yes. And that's better than having a wife nagging at you about fancy manners, fancy clothes. Well, well, come on in here. <laughs> Glad to see you. We've been waiting for you. Michael? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Trask, I'd like to have you meet Miss Lily Henry. Miss Henry? And this is Mr. Edgar Bowles. They uh, have been yeah. very kindly taking care of our little friend here. May we see him? Sure, of course. Well, he looks puny enough. Good, good. Of course, he's only about eight months old. Hard to tell. We're taking an awful gamble, Christine. Do you think he'll do? I'm not sure. He seems small enough. For what? You realize, Mr. Earp, that once we take the child, there'll be no returning it. Mm. Uh, take him uh, where? We're giving up the theater, Mr. Bowles, after this current season. Play actors. I might have known it. Yes. We're returning to our first love, the circus. We are really aerial artists. That's what worries me about the boy, Christine. What if she'd grow into a six-footer? He'd be too big for a top-mounter. Well, what's a top-mounter? I stand on Mr. Trask's shoulders, and the child would stand on mine. And that isn't easy on a high wire. A high wire? One hundred feet in the air. And without a net, naturally. Without a net? Well, what happens if you slip? You can understand our concern. No, I'm afraid he'd get too heavy. Arnold, excuse us. Don't worry about a thing. They'll take it. Did you see how beautiful he is? Don't get any ideas. But we can keep him on short rations. Water is milk. That'll stunt his growth. Well, all right. If it doesn't work out, we can always turn him over to Zamberini. He's always losing assistance. Yes, that's good, good. <clears throat> Who, uh, oh, who's Zamberini? He's a lion tamer. Marshal, we're in agreement. We'll pick him up tomorrow at noon. He'll be ready. Ah. Real fine people, aren't they? Oh, fine people. All right, let him break his neck falling off the high wire, and if that don't kill him, let him feed him to the lions. What do you care if they stun his growth and make him into a midget? Oh, keep your freight wagon. Well, it's better than keeping a saloon. I'll be back for him tomorrow noon. Remember, all you have to do tomorrow is wait in the carriage outside the tavern so that they can see you. Mr. Earp, we want to talk about the baby. 
You tell him, Arnold. Marshal, what started as an act has turned into reality. We want to really adopt the baby. But that wasn't the idea. Can't we have him, Mr. Earp? But those two people really need the baby. So do we. We've fallen in love with him. Well, I don't know. Turing is no way to bring up a baby. Let's wait and see what happens tomorrow. Hiya, Lily. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Trask are outside. They're here for the baby. That baby ain't gonna walk no high wire. I'm keeping that baby. In a saloon? Never mind where. The baby stays with me. Oh, no, I don't. I'm raising that baby myself, Wyatt. In a freight wagon jolting all over Arizona? No, on a ranch. I'm selling my freight line lock, stock, and barrel. Well, I'm selling my saloon. The baby's mine. No, it's mine. The baby needs a mother. Well, I can be a mother. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, both of you. Now, look, the sheriff of this county put that baby into my charge, and whether you like it or not, I'm the legal guardian, and the decision uh, where that child goes is mine. Give it to me, Marshal. Oh, no, no, give it to me. Well, why should I give it to either one of you? Well, those play actors are nice people. They, they really want that baby. But you know me better than you do them. Oh, nonsense. Why, it knows me for ten years, don't you? Well, now, what am I supposed to be, Solomon? Cut the baby in half? Now, how's it possible to give the baby to both of you? Fine, helpful pair you are. A baby needs love more than anything else. Besides, they're married and you're not. And now there be any here who have reason to say why this man and this woman should not be joined in holy matrimony, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. <coughs> shh, darling, shh. Can't you hold a baby right, Lily? Give him a crooked back that way. If you keep poking your mug into his, he'll have a crooked face to match. Here, Wyatt. Place the ring on her finger. Oh. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. This was my toughest case. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. Long may his story be told.